Hey everyone, Eric from Bottoms Up Beer here, and today we're going to be talking about starting up your new Bottoms Up Beer long draw system. So the long draw implies that you have a separate keg room in which your beer is going to be run up to a bar. So you can tell from this newly installed system here, we've got all of our wall mounted panels, lines with empty keg detectors on them. and. We're going to talk about how to start this up, how to clean it, how to program your cup size and daily maintenance, all that stuff in this video. So let's get started. One of the first things you're going to want to do is turn your glycol chiller on before you do anything in the cool room. So there's going to be a red switch and this will turn the actual chilling unit itself on. You can see there's a digital display here. That's going to drop down to about 29 degrees or so. So for now, right when we're starting up, just turn on that red switch to get your glycol down to temperature. The first thing you're going to want to look for is your main draft CO2 shutoff valve. That's this red guy right here in the center. You make sure that your bulk CO2 tank is on and ready to go. And then you're just going to Push that so that it is following the lines. And normally there is a hiss that can kind of follow if your tank's already on. You can check to see if your regulators on the panel move up to our preset levels. Once your pressure is on, you can turn on your CO2, keg CO2 gauge. So looking at our panel here, there's a keg CO2 gauge label and beer pump gauge label. So you can pull it down on your keg CO2 gauge and it has a pre-recorded level set, but if not, it needs to be between 12 and 15 PSI. To adjust that, you just pull out on this nozzle and rotate it clockwise to tighten it. And for lines one and two here, all of our lines are numbered. I'm just gonna be testing with water, but you can tap your kegs once you have this valve open and your two supply lines here are also open. So I'm gonna set these in a bucket of water. Imagine that they're beer. Then once they are in the, or once your kegs are tapped, you're gonna pull down on the beer pump gauge valve that is the right side. So you hear this clicking sound. That is the liquid being pumped up into our input keg detector here. And once that's on, we need to fill up our empty keg detector. So we've got a blue valve here that you're just going to slowly crack. Only about halfway or so, and I'll start to fill up this line. There we go. And so that liquid travels through the orange line into either a drain or we'll have a bucket in the corner that, that holds that runoff for you. So you can check that bleed off bucket once a week or so to make sure it doesn't overflow. Just to give you a little closer shot here. So this white float, when this hits the bottom, that will indicate at the dispenser that the keg is empty and needs to be topped off. So each time you tap a new keg, you'll need to do this process of tapping the, the new keg and then just barely cracking this bleed off valve here and letting the indicator detector slowly fill up. You wanna make sure that the empty keg detector is completely full and there's a Photo illustration on the panel itself to make sure you know it's not half full or if there's kind of foam shown at the, here at the top. I want it to be nice and full and just by barely cracking this open, we'll get a nice slow fill and ensure that we're ready to roll on that end. So here we are at the dispenser and you'll notice that these two lines here are flashing empty keg. So we don't have any liquid in those lines at the moment. We just worked with one and two filling up, so that's why those aren't flashing. So I'm just gonna work with number two here, just so it's a little more centered for you. You're gonna screw on your cup coupler 
Um, not too tight, just snug. You'll take those off each night. But we need to remove any liquid or remove any air pockets from the line still. So we're gonna go into purge mode. That's this bottom left button here. And purge mode is sort of a manual override. So once we push that, we can push down on our slider magnet here. No liquid's gonna come out. So we see that our lights are green here. It's a good sign. What we're gonna do is take a cup, hold it upside down like this to prevent any blowout. And you're just gonna press the start button. And what this does is push out any air that could be in the line. We want to have nice, clear liquid running through. So in this case, it's just water. But starting up with beer, you can always get some foam in there. That's looking good to me. So now just press stop. Like that. So that's how we get all the liquid purged out. That's why we're purging or priming the system there. We can also clean this way by taking a bucket um, with warm water and some cleaner solution. And just like if we were starting up with a keg, you fill it in your keg detector and then purge the line through to clean it. But now we're ready to program our size. So the center button here just says program size. You see our size options, small, medium, large. And if just for information purposes here, we're just gonna do a medium. So we're in program size, our size is selected. Let's take the cup, push it down. And you're gonna hold the size button for about five seconds until liquid comes out. Then you're gonna press the start button when you're at the level you want. Looks good to me. So this has programmed the M, the medium portion, and it will stay like that for until you reprogram it differently. It does not matter which size you program your specific, specific vessel. Um, I know a lot of folks will do the small, uh, the small for say the five ounce tasters. They'll do in for 16 ounces, large for pitchers, but you can do any sort of combination that you want. Now that we have that programmed, just press pour mode. And that is our you know, normal operation mode, auto pour, auto mode, however you want to think of it. And so now that we have the cup programmed, we just set that down and it'll fill to our programmed size. There we go. And that's the basic startup and use of this new system. Once your glycol unit is down to temperature, so when this is reading, you know, 28, 29 degrees, and you've got beer in your lines, you can turn on the pump itself to circulate throughout the trunk line. So the reason we wait to turn the pump on is that if you had these empty beer lines and you send cold liquid running alongside them, it potentially frees up those lines from any condensation that could have built up from testing with water. And then the lines would be frozen, you can't run anything through, and it's a real big hassle to try to fix that. Now this is now this is a larger chiller. Uh, see, it has two pumps, so that means there is a second pump that needs to be plugged in. Uh, a lot of units will just have one pump, so you just touch that, flick on that green switch, and you're good to roll. But uh, in this case, we need to plug in a second one. So we've got an outlet right over there. That we plug into. And I would turn that one on and start circulating. So there's a few different scenarios we can kind of work with. You get an idea of how the system works and what you can do to better cut down on waste and kind of learn the system a little better. Let's say that you have a keg in the back that blows, say halfway through a pour. So say it's going, everything's going nicely. I'm just gonna manually stop it here. But let's say the keg empties out there. So just take this glass off, set it aside. You'll go back to your keg room. You'll tap the new keg. So you'll tap the keg. You'll top off the empty keg detector, you know, assuming it's all the same flavor. Then you can just set your same glass down and just manually stop it at the level you want. That's one way to get around uh, after you change an empty keg. Some people like to program on the small side 
just a, an ounce or two if people want to do samples. Like that. So we held the small, the small button for a couple of seconds. The liquid came out. Press start. So now, if someone wants to try a sample of something, they have you know just a little splash to work with. At the end of the day, just unscrew your coupler here and give these just a quick dunk in sanitizer or warm water. Do not soak them because they'll erode the epoxy and the magnets inside. And you can take off your drip tray and just give that a rinse and then just fill up a pitcher with some warm water or again with some sanitizer and just pour it all over your tray here. Give everything a good wipe down and just let everything air dry overnight. And a lot of people will set them kind of on the drip tray there or they'll have an office somewhere that they store them in so that they don't wind up missing. All the dispenser parts and panel parts come with a lifetime warranty, satisfaction guarantee. So if one of the, you know, if anything should go wrong on it, uh, we'll send you the parts at no charge. And we've got plenty of YouTube references on how to work on things. Um, and also available by phone by the tech technical support number that's listed in the bottom left corner of the dispenser. Um, the most common thing that's really the only thing you'll need to do about once a year is to replace the diaphragm of the valve. That is a rubber piece that goes inside the valve and it's part of the valve assembly to help things operate. I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. It is this rubber nipple looking piece. So that goes on the inside of the valve. The light there for you. And to remove the valve, there's really just four uh, Phillips screws that you take out, pull off an E-clip, and it's about a simple five minute process. We have a video on how to do that. To purge out the lines and clean your system, kind of do the setup I've got going here. So I have a five gallon bucket just with some water in it. You can use any sort of uh, powdered cleaner, beer line cleaner that your distributor recommends. You can just set your keg taps and you can set really, you know, as many as you can fit in there. Some people for a system this large will take a large um, a plastic trash can and just fill it with water and you can do all these taps sort of at the same time. So put your water in there with your cleaner and just like if you were starting up tapping a keg, you're going to just open up your EKD purge valve and fill that up and get a blend of your cleaner in there and then go up to the dispenser and go into purge mode and um, manually run the cleaner through that way. And once you've done all the lines like that, you can switch over, just refill your bucket with plain water and rinse it out using the purge mode as well. So we've purged out um, the liquid from the dispensers, we'll say, when we're done cleaning. Um, you'll notice the beer pump's going to kind of click like this when there's no liquid because it's trying to draw in from somewhere. So that sound is the diaphragm in these pushing forward, back and forth. So shut that off. Just turn off your beer pump supply, just like that. And then when you're ready to tap your kegs after cleaning, you just tap your kegs like normal, and then you can turn your beer pump pressure back on, and that'll start to send liquid through the lines, up into this, and pressurize everything.